That's the power of What is the word the word 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 What is the word Yeah, that is a frequency. <laughs> hey fellow hides. Today's video will be all about words and spells. So today I am your language. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable, fellow hides. So good to see you here. In the beginning there was the word and in your beginning, kind of, was the word too. When you grew up, everybody seemed to be waiting for just one thing, for you to open your mouth and finally speak. Say mom, say mom, come on, say mom. And when you've learned to speak, they sent you to school to teach you how to do it correctly and how to do Spelling. Hmm. We already talked about it in the video before the last one. Words are very powerful. In the beginning was the word. And in the last video I promised you to show you some of the words that have been used to put spells and curses on all of us. Every language is full of examples. I want to help you to set yourself free from those spells. So what do I mean by the secret spells of the English language? Well, let me share with you what I call our premier life sentence. And it goes something like this. We awake each morning and go off during the weekdays to earn the living at various jobs and undertakings until we come to the weekend. And this seems perfectly acceptable to most people. However, more people die between 6 and 9 on a Monday morning than any other time of the week. So I do what I call a translation of the English language, and I spell that T-R-A-N-C-E with the idea that words cast spells. So when you translate that life sentence, you remember that a wake is a funeral party for the dead. Mourning is the state you're in when you attend a wake. And you would have to be in a week days to earn the living, since urns are for the ashes of the dead. We call our jobs undertakings. Job itself is a Hebrew word for persecuted. And what we get at the end of this perverse bargain with life is the weak end of the deal as we become progressively weakened ourselves. And so our most prevalent greeting to each other is hello, the reverse of which is, oh, hell. And at first, I suspected the hands of collusion entangling the language to foster illusion. And I think it's quite true that a culture's theology has a great deal to do with a word's etymology and how it evolves over time to combine incompatible meanings that may undermine the original thoughts it was meant to define. But now, I don't think it's planned, for the thing that I've found is that like concepts can gravitate toward the same sound and vibrate at the rate that our thoughts designate. Because words are electromagnetic vibrations whose fine alphabetic tintinabulations can take on the tint of our true expectations, which they then imprint on our metal of mind, causing sounds to adhere when they're of the same kind. That's what she said. Thoth is called the god of scribes. It is said that this Egyptian god gave language to us, and some people believe that originally he just gave it to us to cast some spells. Some believe that language had never had any other purpose than being used for magic, casting spells and curses. Those people believe that originally we would have the capability to communicate telepathically and that we've lost this capability and started using the spells instead. Crazy theory, isn't it? It resonates a lot with me because I know about the power of words. What do you think? So if you believe that, that Thoth invented language for the purpose of magic alone, 
then every word that we are using in any instance is a spell. We are conjuring all the time. Which makes sense if you think about this world in ways of frequencies. So when you go to school today, you learn grammar and spelling instead of casting spells. That's what you think. <laughs> but words are magic spells because of frequency. So every single one of them is already a spell. And that is why you have to learn to use them wisely for you are conjuring all day. And the problem is most of us are sending out negative energy all day, totally unwillingly, totally unknowingly. You are producing frequencies whenever you think something like, oh, that's gonna turn out badly. You are manifesting reality with every word that you send out. One of the earliest definitions for the term magic is the art of influencing events and producing marvels using hidden natural forces. So if I'd hand you the word magic and the word net, how would you combine them? Magic net? Well, how about magnetic? I think what we are using is the electromagnetic energy of this earth. But like I told you in the video before, that's just my narrative. For you it can be whatever you wish. It's your reality. Claim it. Make it yours. It's yours. We are producing electromagnetic energy with everything we think, say or feel. I can't stress this enough, guys. You are producing those frequencies all the time. Whether you know it or you don't, you are doing it. So you should better watch yourself because you are manifesting reality. And you always attract what you send out. So if you should be one of those, and this world is packed with them, who's always expecting some negative outcome, well, then you are producing what we call self-fulfilling prophecies. Watch your life, watch your thoughts, and start noticing the connection between them. It's real, guys. Whatever you may believe, it's quite real. But now...